Hey, hey everyone, this is Tara Lynn. I am the artist behind Paint, Rinse, Repeat, and you are live with me today to paint Spring Corgi. I am super excited about this. I know I say that about every painting, but uh, this guy's super cute, so I'm ready to dive in. Before we get started, um, you have a supply list. I'll go over that briefly. Today, I am creating on a 12 by 12 canvas. Um, in order to transfer the design, you may want to use transfer paper. Um, and to, to transfer that, you would put that shiny side down on your canvas. You would print out the outline, put it right on top, and then trace over it with a pencil or pen. Um, and that will get the design on there for you. And... I messed up part of mine, um, but that's how you would get that transferred. There are a lot of different ways to transfer. Use what is easiest for you. Aside from the outline and the canvas, um, we've got some acrylic paint we're creating with acrylic. So um, I'll go over the color list. I've got black and white. I've got phthalo blue. Phthalo green. I've got a few different browns. I've got burnt sienna. I've got raw sienna. And I've got raw umber. So three very different brown tones. And then I also have yellow and red. So lots of different colors today. Um, of course, you can use what you have available and use colors that you love. Uh, you can change the sky color. You can change the color of the tulips. Um, there was even somebody who had wished I was painting a dachshund today. And you can change the dog. You can change the shape. So please don't ever think that you have to uh, stay exactly with the design that I have because there are so many different ways to change up a painting. All right, uh, because we're painting with acrylic, you're gonna want water, paper towels, a plate or a palette to put your paint on, paint brushes in various sizes. I most often use small, medium, and large rounds and flats. A heat gun or a hair dryer is optional, but it can be helpful uh, to help with that drying time as we move between layers. And other than that, you just need your creativity. So let's get started. I'm ready to jump in here. Before we begin, I'll remind you, one of the reasons that I like to go um, live on YouTube and do my recordings through YouTube is it does allow me, um, allows my uh, viewers to pause, rewind, fast forward. Um, you can speed up if I'm going too slow. There are lots of different options for you. So um, work along at a pace that works for you. You do not have to work at the same pace that I am working. All right. Um, just to make this a little more visible while you get your outline transferred, I'm going to go over my outline with a black sharpie and this helps make it more visible while i'm on camera you do not have to do this in person unless it's helpful to you sometimes when you're working through the layers this black marker will show through sometimes that can be a helpful and handy thing and other times that can be really difficult um, to try to hide but it's up to you kind of how you choose to do that. But for me on camera, this just makes it a lot easier for you to see what I'm doing. Now, as you make these flower shapes, keep in mind that all of my designs, um, I tend to go more abstract than realistic. So my flowers, even though 
they are giving tulip vibes are not hyper realistic so just kind of go in there with some fun flowery shapes Alright, that's pretty much all I think we'll need to stay on track here. Alright, let's get going. I'm going to get on my palette Thalo Blue, Thalo Green, and White. And those are the colors I'm going to start with the background. Oops. So I'm going to grab a large flat brush um, and in a few places I'm going to get this pure color this is kind of my most dark shade so I'm just going to put a little bit of this on there here and there so go ahead and do that don't overthink it we just want some shadowy areas with a darker tone and then I might even get a little black on this palette. I don't need a lot. I'm really not going to go too dark. But I'm going to mix a little black and blue and just maybe even add a little dark in those areas. Okay. All right, then I'm going to take white and phthalo. I'm going to keep this still pretty deep. I'm going to add some of this around those areas. And lighten it a little more. And a little more. So each time just getting a little bit lighter and lighter. All right, while I'm working with this blue, I do want to add just a pinch of this thalo green in there and change up the tone just a bit so that I can add some variation here and there. Down by the flowers, a little bit darker. Up in the, the upper area, definitely keeping that light.
I'm just going in here quickly and kind of doing a cross a little bit here, a little bit there. I like to see those brush strokes, so I'll definitely leave some of those in this final design. So just play with that background until you're happy. You know, you can add bits and pieces of highlight and shadow here and there. There's no right or wrong. It's just, just a background. And the final steps um, for that background, I just added a little bit of white in the darker areas just to kind of make it <clears throat> pop. Now, what I'm going to do over here, I've got this dark, dark thalo blue where I mix thalo with a pinch of black, right? I'm going to add a big dollop of this thalo green. And so this gives me kind of a deep teal. And I'm just going to add a little shadowing around the flowers. Kind of like a base coat. We are definitely going to add some lighter green up in there. But you know, parts of that we want a little bit shadowed. Start darker and we'll work our way upwards. All right, gonna wipe off this brush. And I think for now, this is the last, um, I'm gonna use this giant brush for now. I'm gonna switch to kind of a medium, uh, medium flat. I'm gonna get some yellow on my palette here. There we go. All right, uh, we're going to start lightening up this green just a little bit. So I'm going to pull some off to the side here. I'm going to add a little white. Now this color is not far off from where I want it to be, but I'm going to add a pinch of yellow. I don't want this to go too completely grass green, but I'm going to turn it into a little warmer tone. All right, so I still have this medium color and I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna pull in some of these stems that are behind these flowers. And we're gonna build up a lot of this stuff. This is still one of our deeper, darker colors. Okay. So just make sure every flower that you can see has a stem coming from the bottom. Again, I'm going to add a little white, a little more yellow. We're going to start lightening this a little bit. Gonna pull this lighter color through that stem. And then what we're gonna do here is I'm gonna start filling in the space with just kind of pulling grass-like patterns. And so you'll see I'm being really loose with these brush strokes. So it's just kind of giving the impression of grass, okay? All around these flowers. Yes, right now I'm going over the flowers. That's fine. All right, so I want to lighten this even more. And I'm going to do kind of the same thing, just come back through, add lots of 
touches of green, pulling those stems and grasses all over. All right, that's our base coat for the greenery. We are going to layer. So we're gonna let this dry, start working on the corgi, and then we're gonna come back to that. We're gonna come back to the flowers and then we'll add more greenery on top. So this is kind of our first layer there. All right, we are gonna go into some whites and browns and all kinds of colors for this dog here. Um, and there are a few uh, different colors. If you have a, a corgi dog in your life and you want to mimic um, those colors, that's fine. Um, I'm just going to do the traditional um, corgi colors that I've got here in the picture in my sample. Um, and so to begin, um, I'm gonna get some burnt sienna. Burnt sienna is kind of a reddish orange brown. And so with the burnt sienna, I'm going to paint in these ears. I'm gonna show you the parts that I'm gonna paint with the burnt sienna first. Um, the ears, the area around the eye, we're gonna do burnt sienna. And right now I'm just laying down a full coat all over the ear. I'm not worried about fur, anything like that right now. Just laying down patches of color. All right, then I'm going to get raw sienna. Raw sienna is more of a yellow-brown. And so for this raw sienna, I am going to paint his cheeks. Right now, I've got a little raw sienna I'm gonna put up here where his eyebrows are, and then I'm gonna curve a little bit under his eyes, and then a little bit at the base of his ears. All right, next, I've got raw umber. Raw umber is kind of a black-brown shade. So I'm gonna take this raw umber and I actually wanna lighten it a little bit. So I'm gonna add a little white. And then I'm gonna get a pinch of red and a pinch of blue. It has in, oh, that's a lot of red. Um, it has in that sample just a little bit of a purplish tone. So I'm gonna do red, blue, maybe some, some more of that true raw umber. 
if you're not really into all this mixing, you can totally just do raw umber and white. All right, so this color here, I'm going to put on the top of his head. And then I'm going to carry this color um, down his back here. Now, a lot of this is a little darker. It's kind of a black brown, so I am going to add just a little black into that mixture as well. Right now I'm kind of just color blocking this guy here. All right, his chest area is white, but the shadow shade to white is going to be this blue. So I'm gonna add blue, black, and white. Now the black and the white are gonna cancel each other and make kind of a gray. And so we're aiming for kind of a gray blue. And so what I'm gonna do is just Pull some of this gray blue in the area where this guy has white here on his chest and then I can dip right into that white and kind of layer in the white here Now remember what I said about this kind of just being color blocking. We're just planning out this guy's fur colors. And the thing about mixing wet paint, right, is that I can add white and white and white and it's still going to mix into this blue. Um, so that's normal, okay, for this to happen. We're, this is just kind of our undercoat there. Um, now he does have a little white around his chin, so I'm just gonna fill that in. And then he's got white up his little snoot here. A Little bit of this has some shadow to the right, but most of that is brighter white. So I'm gonna bring that white right down the middle here. All right, so we've got our base color for this guy. Now that's helpful because what we can do now um, is we can let a lot of this fur area dry while we focus on some other things. Um, I'm going to move on to the flowers, but before I do that, I am going to fill in the eyes with black so that we can get those nice and dry as well. And then I'm gonna mix black with a little white and I'm gonna make a light gray. So more white than black. And then in the eye, this is still wet, so it's gonna blend. I'm gonna add a little little swoops of highlight in here to kind of blend in. Because even eyes, when they're black, are not, um, you know, the blacks of our eyes have highlights and reflections and all that good stuff. So 
Rarely is anything in nature truly, truly black. And then for now, I'm gonna add the black of the nose. Which the top part of the nose is just kind of a jelly bean. And then you've got these nostrils that come up. And kind of connect at the bottom there. And then of course the inside is black as well. So we'll work on the highlights and all that of the nose later, but for now I can pull into this gray. And I'm just gonna pull in those nostrils with the gray so I don't lose them. And then across the top where there would be a highlight. So I can come back to the nose and kind of fix that later, but that way I don't lose those pieces. Alrighty. My palette is pretty full, um, but what I'm gonna do for these flowers, I'm gonna switch, um, I was using the round for the eyes and the nose. I'm gonna switch back to a medium or small flat, and we are gonna work on these tulips. All right, now these, um, on my sample, I've got these tulips pink. And I did that by mixing red and white. I did not use pink from the tube. But that's totally up to you. Um, I've got a deep red. I'm gonna pull over here. And then I'm gonna dip into some white and lighten that. So this is my darker color. So I'm gonna pull some of this kind of at the base of wherever I've got a tulip. Just randomly on parts of these flowers. This one here hasn't opened yet, so my darker color, maybe it's gonna be in that middle. So just here and there, kind of tapping it at the bottom of the flower Wipe off that red. All right, I am gonna lighten this quite a bit. And as I mix it, I don't need to mix it completely either. So this is gonna get a little lighter. I can even add a scoop or two of white in there. It's okay if I've got color on my palette that's not completely mixed. That's actually kind of ideal. Um, so what I'm gonna do is pick up this whitish pink mixture, and I'm gonna start pulling in these uh, petal shapes. And I'm pulling up from the bottom. Here and there you can mix in a little red if you want them darker. See, I lost a lot of my red there. So I can go back and touch in a little bit red if I lost it. Yeah, I'm loving this. Okay, but I just want kind of these abstract flowery shapes so I can alternate between my red and my pink. You know, we want some lighter, some darker. So I'm just being real abstract and pulling, just 
kind of fluffy tulipy shapes alternating between the white, the pink, and the red. Do not be afraid to be abstract with this. Sometimes that's harder than trying to be realistic because you're really just trying to give an impression of something and it's hard sometimes to let go of that realism that we all try to achieve. Right, I'm kind of loving my abstract tulips. So I'm gonna let them be. Rinse off that brush. We're gonna go back to the dog. All right, so now I'm gonna to switch to a medium round brush and we're gonna start adding in some fur-like texture. Um, so I do have some colors mixed in my white. I'm gonna roll with it. I'm not real worried about that. Um, this dog is not hyper realistic. Um, but the first thing I'm gonna do is he's got some white on the tips of his ears. So I'm gonna come through and just add some short little white fur-like strokes up here. That may feel a little funny. We're going to fill in some fur, so don't worry too much about that. All right, next, I don't even need to really wash my brush. I am going to go into Burnt Sienna. That's my reddish brown. That is the color we did the fur. I'm going to pull, pull that aside and add a little white to it. Just change the tone. We already have that undercoat, so what I'm going to do here is just start adding kind of large fur-like strokes to the outside of that ear. And what I do to one side, of course, got to do to the other.
and I'm just adding a little bit around the ears. Don't stress about it, okay? Next thing I'm gonna do, tap into this white. Now he's got kind of some white going on in the middle. Yes, since I'm not washing my brush, some of that white is mixing. That's okay. All right, dipping into a little raw sienna. Gonna raw sienna and white over here. Gonna add a little bit of that, kind of blending this stuff out. So the raw sienna, I'm just kind of adding on the, the left and the right side of each ear. So that's raw sienna and white. I'm just layering up some of these colors, just makes it feel a little more real. All right, so with this raw sienna, I'm actually gonna mix a little more raw sienna and white. I am gonna add a touch of red. This is gonna lighten it quite a bit. And inside the ear, I'm just gonna pull some of this like pinkish red color. And then I'm gonna go into my deep red and that deep red is kind of, you know, where the inside of the ear comes to make a shadow. Can even darken it. Just a pinch. All right, up here on the darker part of the head, that was raw umber, a little bit of white. Now I did purple it a little bit, but this time I'm just gonna go raw umber and white. And I want kind of a medium tone, so halfway between the two colors. I don't want it too light, I don't want it too dark, just a nice medium. All right, and everywhere I've got this darker tone, I'm just gonna pull some fur-like strokes up at the top for some highlight around the ear. And that's where I'm gonna stop, because that would be where the lighter part gets this dog. All right, wipe that off. I can go right into my burnt umber. And now I'm gonna pull some burnt umber fur in that dark area everywhere that I don't have highlight. And anytime you do fur, follow the shape of the face. All 
or follow the shape of the body. Overlap areas. All right, wiping off that brush. Next, I am going to mix my raw umber with my raw sienna, or I'm sorry, burnt sienna and raw sienna. So it's my yellow brown and my red brown. I'm going to mix those two together. Again, just kind of trying to go for a halfway color. You can add a pinch of white if you want to, just to change that tone. But in here, I'm going to go around the eyes. Oops, don't put your hand in your flowers. Anywhere sections are touching, I'm going to let that fur kind of overlap a little bit. That's going to give continuity between the fur. All right, now a little raw sienna, a little raw umber, and a little white. I'm gonna come through and I'm gonna add this little eyebrow here. A little bit of that kind of goes around his eye too. He's got a little lightness in his fur under his eye as well. Now this color also kind of comes down by his cheeks. So I'm going to start pulling some of this down here. I'm not changing this color, I just need to mix up a little bit more. All right, I definitely need some more clean white. 
All right, down here by his mouth, again, we've got kind of some white. We need to fix this mouth shape a little bit. So we've got some white that kind of comes through here. This is his chin. Where it meets, I'm just going to blend those two colors a little bit. Now in the dark part of the mouth, that's red and black, deep red and black. That's going to give kind of a shadow in here. Around the tongue. All right, the tongue is the same color as our tulips. So in the darker areas, I'm gonna do this reddish black underneath because it would be shadowed, right? So it's darker underneath and down the middle of the tongue. And then we've got a little bit of this reddish white. I'm just going to add a little white and kind of curve it around the edge there to give the impression that that tongue has a little bit of wetness. All right, kind of letting this layer here dry. Going to go downward into the chest area. And this is where I'm gonna start pulling some white in. Now again, kind of just fur-like strokes. I don't wanna hide all of that deep blue, but. Definitely need to layer upwards. Now the chin up here, we're not trying to hide. We don't want to go up too close to that chin because there is kind of some shadow color under there. I'm kind of liking it. You know, you don't have to add too much white. And of course, where the, the white meets the darker black in the back, you can kind of blend that out a little bit. Back here, I'm going to take some burnt umber. Just a little bit of white. I don't want to lighten it too much. I can even add maybe just my lighter burnt umber if you've got some of that left over. Staying pretty dark. And then just going to pull some highlights up top with that. And I'm going to go directly into my black to pull some of the darker fur in that area where that shadow would be. So lighter on top, darker at the bottom. Again, you can kind of pull some dark fur in there where they meet as well. Now 
All right, from here, we pretty much are just adding some, some highlights. Um, so we've got the white on the face that needs to be furified a little bit. So what I'm gonna do is pull some white off to the side and add the tiniest bit of black. Um, I want this to be pretty light. This is going to be just some fur texture in our white. So not white, but almost white. Okay, we're just gonna pull a little bit of that fur here and there. Along this little midsection. And once I have that darker white, this is gonna probably be harder to see on camera. So I've got that gray white. I can come through with my bright white and add some of the, the brightest fur. So adding that, that gray layer underneath gives us the option to brighten it up. While I've got white on my brush, I'm gonna go ahead and give a bright highlight in the eye. Then I'm gonna dip into that gray white. That was our, our shadow color for the white fur. And I'm gonna pull a little highlight along the edge, the bottom side and edge. We're kind of coming in the home stretch here. All right, on his nose, he's got a highlight. So we're gonna put that in there. And then I want to get a really light gray or if you still have some of that shadow color left over. And then I am really, I'm actually gonna get a tiny brush. I'm going to pull in that curve of the nostril. I'm gonna pull a little bit of an outline, just a black outline, kind of down from the nose and out around the bottom of the mouth there. With this tiny brush, I'm also just gonna add a few little dots on his little cheeky nose where his whiskers would be. For 
for now. I'm going to clean off the tiny brush and go back to my big one. This is where you can start. Um, we still need to add that last layer in our greenery. Okay. But as far as the dog goes, this is where you can add your finishing touches, add highlights and shadows to your liking on the face. Um, change it up. Get a feel for this dog and his personality or her personality and add light areas where you want to and the key here is just working with soft furry brush strokes. Around the eyes, this guy's got kind of a swoopy eyelid that goes kind of down and around. So it goes up and swoop. I'm gonna thin some black and I'm gonna pull Some whiskers, just a few. Don't need to go crazy. Right, and there is just a kind of a fullness around this face that I feel like I am missing. So I am going to pull up this white here into the neck and chest area.
All right, I'm pretty happy with my guy. I think the only thing that I would have done differently if I could do it again was just kind of give that face a little more depth. I don't know that I'll be able to do that with the shadows that I've got in the All right, I'm gonna quit messing with this guy um, on his face before I end up not liking him. I tend to do that, I'll overwork things. Um, but I'm gonna add just a little bit more down here in this greenery, grassy area here. So I'm gonna get a mixture of phthalo green and white right now, equal parts. And this makes kind of a nice um, minty, turquoisey type green. And I'm going to get a medium shade and add just a pinch of yellow. And that's what turns it a little more grassy. Grassy green there. All right. So what I'm going to do, I've got my brush saturated in this green. I'm going to touch in a little bit of white and then I'm just going to kind of add some um, interest down here. And I've got both colors on my brush. So we're going to make sure we've got some stems. You can even go into that darker green. The trick here is just multiple colors. I'm just going to kind of layer some of this stuff. Um, we want some greenery kind of at the base of these tulips. So multiple colors on your brush at the same time. So whether that's your thalo, your mint, or your white. And the very last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get some white. I'm going to tint it with just a tiny, tiny bit of that pink, but I pretty much want this to be white. Very, very, very subtle pink. And then I'm going to come through and maybe add some highlights to parts of these tulips. And that's going to distinguish the petals. It's going to make some of these petals fall to the back. Some up here in the front.
if you want to, you can do a little of that with the red in these centers, kind of just add lots of variation in these petals, lots of touches of color. All right, that's it. I think I am done. Maybe one more thing. I'm going to add just a pinch of this dark black to the very center of the eye. There we go. All right, I am finished. Here we have our spring corgi. Thank you so much for painting with me. I cannot wait to see your version. So if you have painted spring corgi, I would love if you would share with me. Um, I love seeing what all my supporters are up to. I need to quit messing with this guy. All right, the last thing you want to do, and I don't do this on camera um, all the time, is paint the edges. So usually I'll use what I've got left over on my palette and go from there. But I just want to say thank you so much for being a supporter. Um, your support means everything to me, and I love painting with you and seeing what you guys make. Um, please consider tagging Paint, Rinse, Repeat um, or sharing with me on my page. Um, if you want to tag me, it's at Paint, Rinse, Repeat or hashtag Paint, Rinse, Repeat, and I will see it and I will love it. Um, but even better than that, I would love for you to share in my group. It is free to join. Um, the address is right here on the screen. It is facebook.com slash groups slash Paint, Rinse, Repeat. Show everybody what you have created. I cannot wait to see it. Um, again, thanks for being a supporter. Um, and I will see you next time. Thanks so much, everyone. Have a great night.